but just a little bit. <laughs> Chair. Hey guys, Omar here, and Sony just released the Sony A7C Mark II, which is exciting for me because the Sony A7C right here has been my YouTube camera of choice for the last two years. I was originally drawn to the Sony A7C mostly for its looks because I'm shallow like that, but it was much more than that. First thing that I loved about this little camera was it had no record limit and it made it perfect for shooting a podcast. And the second huge benefit as a creator and YouTuber is that this is a great little indoor camera, but it's small enough that a small camera sometimes is the best camera. And now the new A7C Mark II is an A7 IV in a smaller package. And that's actually what I'm recording on right now is the Sony A7 IV. And let's start with that because this camera, the a7 IV, is a beast. It can basically be a jack of all trades. Also is a fantastic video camera. Now in this video, I'm gonna be holding up the a7C original because I had to return the a7C Mark II after using it. So pretend that this is the a7C Mark II. And by the way, it does come in silver and black, <laughs> just like this one. But there is, stay tuned till the end, Something that's missing from the new one that is on this one only, special edition. Now, since Sony releases a camera just about every week, we also need to discuss which camera is probably best for you. All right, why would you get the Sony a7C Mark II? Here are the things that stood out as benefits. The first one, it's small. Again, a smaller camera usually means you'll take it with you somewhere <laughs> instead of leaving it home. So again, great for hiking, for travel. The second one is the image quality, both in photo and video. This camera takes fantastic photographs. It's great in low light. It produces great colors. And for video, it's just perfect because it has, if you don't like to color grade, right now I just have the camera set to cine tone and everything looks good. You just put it on cine. For someone who's not a videographer, you just put it on cine tone and it looks good. Okay, so this is the test of the standard stabilization. I'm holding it with a little Manfrotto tripod. I'm gonna to try to walk with the standard. This is what it's like to walk with the standard if you need the wide. Okay, and now I have active stabilization. If I'm not moving, it's pretty steady. So I'm actually holding it on the tripod there. You can see behind me, very nice. I could just pan around. Hello, welcome to New Jersey. And then if we walk, this is what walking and talking with the Sony a7C in active stabilization looks like. Again, I'm holding a little mini tripod up with the 20 millimeter, no ND filter. This is just straight out of the lens. Whoa. Another huge upgrade is they added a switch to go between video and photo. You can save all your video settings to one switch, then switch to photo and all your photo settings are switched. The camera does shoot up to 4K 60, but there is a crop, a 1.5 crop, just like the a7 IV. The ergonomics were improved from the original a7C, but I feel like if they improve the ergonomics, the camera starts to get a little bulkier. So I didn't mind the size of this tiny guy. Now, a big surprise on the new a7C Mark II is it had the same, on paper, the same viewfinder. But when I look in both of them, the new one is actually a little brighter and has more magnification. And this was a great addition. It actually made the viewfinder usable. I feel like the a7C viewfinder is just so dark and cramped. And so that was a welcome change. Some of the negatives are not deal breakers by any means. But the first one for me is like so personal. I feel like violated by Sony. And it's this. It is the dimple leather that you find on the A7C original. That's what set this camera apart. It had this kind of like racing little dimple leather doohickey. And the new one has kind of the textured rubbery feel, actually easier to hold the new one, but I just love the look of the first one. So that's a huge, terrible negative. Not a deal breaker though. Still has a micro HDMI connector. <laughs> if you come from the A7 IV, that has a full HDMI connection, micro. Now, not sure why this was changed, but the original on off switch on the Sony a7C was maybe in the 11 o'clock position. And it was strangely moved to the two o'clock position, which makes turning the camera on something to get used to. So just keep that in mind. 
And I'd say the last negative is no two card slots, but that is kind of, you know what you're getting into if you get this camera. So only personal memories on here, not something you're hired for once in a lifetime. And I gotta say, that's pretty much it. And what's great about all the cameras being released nowadays is the negatives, the, the list of negatives is getting lighter and lighter. And there are more benefits to the newer cameras than there used to be. We're innovating, people, we're innovating. Which brings up the question, which camera should you purchase? Now, if you own the a7 IV, sorry, <laughs> saying the a7 IV, if you own the a7C, the original one, should you upgrade? Let's start with that. So the first thing is, Oh my God, it's such a great upgrade, but 24 megapixels to 33 isn't such a big difference. So don't upgrade for megapixels. This camera has enough. That's number one. Number two, if you love the dimpled leather, okay, I'll stop with that. <laughs> two, if you're a photographer, this only has one dial on the back and an ex exposure compensation, uh, you know what I'm saying, an exposure compensation dial. When you're shooting street photography, this camera is great because you put it on aperture priority or some kind of you know, semi-auto mode and you can use the exposure comp dial to raise your exposure or lower it. So that's not a problem. The problem is if you wanna shoot manual, there is no front dial on this camera. So if you're kinda used to using this camera in a semi-auto mode and use the exposure comp dial, you're fine. But the new one has the same dials as the a7 IV and you have three dials now. You have a customizable dial, which can be exposure comp if you want to, but you could also make it ISO. You have a front dial and a rear dial. So that alone, if you do photography and you wanna do it in a smaller package, the dials are a great upgrade. Now, if you're a videographer, it depends, it depends, it depends. If you're just doing YouTube and you put this on a tripod like I do, you probably don't need to upgrade. I mean, the eight bit video on this looks fantastic. It's more important, your lighting is more important. Um, and also it's still small, you can vlog outside. This guy is still great for video. But I think if you're starting to care about colors and grading and starting to do a little bit more serious video, then the A7C Mark II is a fantastic video upgrade. It does 4K60, this camera doesn't do 4K60. It has 10-bit colors, it's supposed to have better colors and all that. Personally, I can't, a lot of times can't tell the difference specifically. I just know that when I shoot in 422 10-bit, which I'm recording now in, as Cinetone, it just looks good. Like it looks great at a camera, better than the standard picture profile, which is what I've been using on here. Also, don't get caught up with the upgrade hype. You're, a bunch of videos were probably released today. You have to sit back and wait and think before you upgrade. But those are the reasons to, that, in my opinion, to upgrade from the original fantastic A7C. Now, A7C Mark II versus A7 IV, this is pretty much the same camera. The only thing is the size is different and the card slot amount. If you're shooting professionally, just go with the a7 IV for about $500 more. But something else that the a7 IV doesn't have is this auto framing thing. So right now I have the camera on a tripod, but I set it up to auto frame and it will slowly kind of zoom in on me. But with 33 megapixels, I can sort of walk around and if I'm doing a little lecture here, you know, talking about the uh, cameras, it will continue to frame me and it does it slow enough so it's not too aggressive. For fun, let's go tight and fast. Here we go. Woo! 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 Our A6700, their newest APS-C camera versus the A7C Mark II. Oh my God, that is, it's like two different worlds, APS-C versus full frame. That is a, again, a personal call. They're about the same size. This comes down to lenses again. If you like even smaller package, you're gonna have to go with the 6700 because you can get APS-C lenses that are even smaller. And that will keep your whole uh, kit uh, lighter, smaller, easy to take everywhere. But again, if you want the widest, widey wide, wide wide, the A7C's full frame is great and it's better in low light. So all that is another dilemma for you. And the A7C Mark II versus the ZV-E1. Oh my God, I did that, I can't believe it. Well, the Sony ZE1 is a full frame 12 megapixel video camera. So if you shoot video, that camera is basically 
uh, A7S 3 which is Sony's video camera, their high-end one, in a smaller package. If you do photo, go with the Sony A7C Mark II. Smaller package, full frame, 33 megapixels, so a little bit more resolution, and also does the video. Plus, if you're a videographer in bright sunlight, it's great to put the camera up to your eye and shoot steadier video. Um, I don't know why some of the video cameras don't come with viewfinders. Maybe because you videographers put the television on top of your camera. Overall, it comes down to the one thing missing from the Sony a7C Mark II. The dimpled leather. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.